Welcome to the June 24th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeal. Welcome to everyone who's here. Uh, Bruce Smith, Code Enforcement Officer, is out of town and will not be present at this evening's meeting. Uh, first of all, roll call. Starting on my left, Gib Mendelson. Here. Stephen LaPlante. Here. And we have a new member this evening, James Walsh, Jim Walsh. Welcome. Here. Thank you. Uh, we do have a quorum of four members of the seven present, so we can proceed with the meeting. Uh, first item of business is reviewing the minutes from the March 27th, 2003 meeting. Do you have any comments from board members? I have a few. Page 2, line 45. Uh, name spelling correction of Chapmas. Uh, page 8. Line 27 in the middle of that line, uh, there's an extra S, the word was, uh, line 33, that should refer to the zoning board minutes in 1984. That's all the comments I have regarding those minutes. I have a mo motion to approve those minutes, please. Mr. Chair, having been absent from that meeting, I will abstain from voting on it. Uh, I'll move the acceptance. Uh, I'm the only other member that was present at that meeting. I second that. Uh, to approve the minutes, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, there is no old business to attend to this evening. New business, the first item is to hear the administrative, I'm sorry, to hear the, to hear the appeal of Mike and Jennifer Duddy, 11 Crescent View Avenue, tax map U16, lot 41, for front property line variance of one foot from the required 25 feet to construct a porch addition at 24 feet from the front property line. One item that I'd like to, two items I'd like to mention before we start. Uh, would you introduce yourself, please, sir? Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Duddy. I live at uh, 11 Crescent View Avenue. Welcome. One thing I did need to point out to you, for a variance of appeal approval, we require a majority of the board membership to approve that appeal. That would be four members. Uh, in the event that there are only four members present, uh, that would necessitate uh, all four of us voting in the affirmative to uh, approve that appeal. In this situation, you do have the option to present your case this evening or to delay until there are more board members present. If you agree to present this evening, it re would require that all four of us vote in the affirmative. May I ask a follow-up question to that? Yes. Um, if, it, if it's not a unanimous vote this evening, do I have any ability to come back for reconsideration with a larger um, uh, uh, membership present to the board, or does that foreclose any further? No, no. You, you have the ability to reschedule. No, it's not the exact If I understand you correctly, you're asking if, if, if you're unhappy with the board's decision this evening. I'm sorry. Because there isn't a full complement of the board, can you then come back to the board? That's my question. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, if if you agree to present the case this evening and it is voted upon, that would be a deciding vote, and there would not be uh, a, a recourse. Okay. Well, let's move forward. Uh, I'll hope for the best. Okay. Good. Uh, another item that in that case that I would like to. Uh, mentioned in the interest of disclosure, uh, 
I have not met Mr. Duddy uh, before this evening. I do not know him. However, I've had uh, quite a bit of real estate dealings with a partner in his law firm, Tim Norton, regarding totally unrelated real estate matter. I do want to disclose that. I do not feel that there would be any conflict of interest since I have not met Mr. Duddy prior to this evening and the, the matter is unrelated. Is there any comments from any members or from Mr. Duddy or any members of the board? Please speak. I have no Hear comments. Hearing none, you may proceed. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, request a variance, a one-foot variance, to um, construct a six-foot porch along the front of our house on um, 11 Crescent View Avenue. Just briefly, um, I don't know how familiar, familiar you are with the Crescent View neighborhood. It's a neighborhood that for the last 10 or 15 years has been um, increasingly discovered by um, people purchasing homes that are eventually, that have been uh, turned over from the original owners. And because of that, the neighborhood is in full throes, I think, of um, a gradual evolution um, of uh, people building additions, porches, cutting the tops off their homes and going up and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, for instance, uh, the house immediately um, to the west of ours um, was a ranch house that had the top cut off and went up uh, with some significant <coughs> renovations. The house um, just further to the west of that again top cut off, significant uh, renovations, a porch coming out um, with uh, a variance request very similar to, to ours across the street, a porch added as well that um, I wasn't aware of the variance request that went in, but certainly with a porch that um, approaches the road closer than ours would approach, the house you know, immediately adjacent to that, another one with the roof cut off and significant renovations. And so the point being is that what we're asking for is very much in sync with what's going on in the, the neighborhood, very much in sync with the development of the neighborhood, and very consistent with the kinds of things um, our neighbors are doing, have done, and plan to do in the future. Uh, we also will be um, going straight up with a, a, an overall renovation to the house, so with a new second story, new siding and so on and so forth, none of which requires a variance because we're all for the main portion of the construction uh, within the various setbacks, and I've already talked with Bruce about that, and so on and so forth. The only aspect of this overall um, renovation and construction that requires the variance is the porch. Um, now, we're asking for a one-foot vari variance to get um, a porch that's six feet wide across the front. Um, I have an updated drawing of the porch, if it's of interest. Um, it's a, a variation on the, the, uh, the drawing that I did in the, um, the application. I'm happy to share with you um, if, if you want that. Um, but the point being that <clears throat> we have checked with a number of our neighbors and other porch owners and so on and so forth, and we've gone around town and other places me measuring porch widths um, and talking with the owners of houses about the width of their porch and porches vary greatly, but um, based on that uh, um, fairly significant amount of legwork, um, it seems to be that um, the folks that we've talked with have, have concluded that if you're really going to use the porch with a front sitting area, perhaps a side table and that sort of thing, to have sufficient space to get around where the chairs might be and you know, a couple of porch chairs and a side table. Five feet, um, which would be within the lot line, is simply a little bit tight to accommodate that comfortably. Six feet makes it work well. Many porches are wider. We don't need to go wider. It seems to be that the conclusion of all of those folks that we've talked about, uh, talked with is that six feet works well. Um, six feet is uh, very similar to the porch that um, I mentioned is just two houses away from us that was uh, built as part of a major renovation um, a year ago with that homeowner as well coming in for a variance request. It would put up the, the um, forward portion of the porch within 24 feet of the road, um, but there are many homes in the neighborhood already that have a front setback of, of, le of 24 feet or less even. Um, there are at least uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six homes right now with um, 
lot lines that are closer to or similar with uh, 24 feet. So the 24 feet isn't going to be out of, con out of uh, character for the, na uh, for the neighborhood. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. All of the neighbors in the neighborhood, literally every neighbor in the circle, supports the plan we have. A cast of several signatures here. We just filled up the page. We could have gotten more. Um, there's not been one voice of discontent or dissent, dissent in, the, in the neighborhood. In fact, we've shared our design plans with the neighborhood, and um, many of the neighbors encouraged us as part of the building to put a porch on the front um, to add to the community feeling of the neighborhood, given the other porches that are sprouting up. Um, so with some, it was with some encouragement from the neighborhood that we added the porch design element. <coughs> it also helps alleviate the, the sort of um, front face of the major construction going straight up over what, what is a cape, turning it into a colonial. It's a, it's a little bit of an awkward front appearance without a porch to help break up that design element. Um, with that, I'd open it up for questions. Thank you. Any questions from board members? Yeah, I'm... Um, I have a few. Mr. Duddy, um, as you are, I'm sure, aware, um, or, or not, as, as a lawyer, we're, we're faced with an ordinance that is fairly straightforward in its, in its uh, uh, terms. And um, in order for us to, to grant variance um, under the, the terms of the ordinance, we have to show that uh, by not doing so that there, uh, that there would be uh, the occurrence of a practical difficulty. And then the uh, statute goes on to define practical difficulty. Um, and within that definition is the language that there is, um, uh, that, that by uh, denying the variance that it would preclude the property, property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district, which results in significant economic injury. And then the statute goes on further to find what economic injury is. And the definition of that is that it, it prevents the applicant from uh, having a structure or accessory which is comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood. And, and, and all of this, I assume, is, is, is what um, uh, elicited your, uh, your sort of preamble. Uh, that the neighborhood is evolving, it's, right. it's, it's uh, people are enlarging their, their homes, uh, and um, um, I, I, I see that going on down there. I took a drive down there, and you can, you can see that that, that 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 sort of thing is going on. What, what interests me more, though, truthfully, is, that, is the fact that there was that there was indeed a variance granted by this board in the last in the last year and a half yes. for front lot setback requirement. Yeah, it, it is uh, the picture inclu included on uh, lot number three, uh, 63, pardon me, that's on page 10 of the application, right at the top of the page. Okay, and that's the one that you have circled and says that there's a similar porch. Right, well, I, right, I mean similar setback issue. That's a six foot wide porch uh, that required um, that neighbor to encroach on the setback, I think, by about two feet or so. Um, now, <coughs> the confusion may, no, not confusion, but the question may be in, the, in uh, that the way that that neighbor um, formulated their plan was, or the way the house is situated on the lot, is that they're treating that as a sideline setback versus a front setback. But you can see where it's situated on, on the road, um, although they have an entrance off the other side of the house. The house is situated now. Um, it has been reoriented in the construction so that the front faces out straight down the street, which is an ocean view. Right. And that porch is literally looking right out at our house, basically. <coughs> We're one house separated around the corner of the mm -hmm. circle. 
What's the address of the house you're speaking of? On um, page six, I believe. It's uh, lot number 63. Uh, it's, um, Is it seven crescent right Number seven. Seven yeah. crescent. And the specific comparison is, is literally with that lot, uh, that porch, I mean, it, and the, the variance granted for that setback, which is literally um, just one house removed from ours and facing our house, basically, the road curves. And so we're all sort of um, cur uh, situated around the corner of the road there. And the variance was to the side, was it the side setback that was give, granted the variance? Or? I believe it was formulated as a side setback, which in this case is the same distance. The, it's a 25 foot setback, whether it's the side or the front there. The appeal was for, for stated as a front line variance uh, from the re required 25 feet of a variance of nine feet and a left side property line variance of two feet from the required 25 feet. So it was both. So it was both. Sorry. It was both. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Can I ask a question as to how you calculated your 30 foot setback from the right of way? Um, how I calculate it with the tape measure, measuring out to, I mean, the lot, the, all of these lots are pretty well defined in terms of where they're situated. Uh, if you look at the tax map, you can see we're all basically in a, in a line. That's on page five. And the corner pins are in place in our lot, the back corner pins, and I measured out from those pins to the road and measured out from the house to the road. Um, so you measured to the edge of the pavement? Well, I measured to, it was not actually to the edge of the pavement. There's some level of gravel or dirt or lawn or whatever but between the pavement and where our lawn starts. I measured out to the edge of the lawn. And do you know the width of the right-of-way? Uh, I'm not sure what the width of the right-of-way is through there. Okay. There's a mortgage <clears throat> survey in, that shows the 30-foot setback, but it does not show the location of the pavement. In the past, we have not been too keen on using the mortgage survey as a true measurement. Yeah, I, well, I asked Bruce specifically whether we needed to have the property surveyed, and he said it was not a requirement to have it surveyed. You said you found the rear pins, but not the front. Is that correct? correct. But again, if you look at the map, I mean, the front line, of, I mean, it just runs right, right down the road. Did you, you submitted a drawing of the porch? Uh, Correct. And you've modified that apparently? Yes. Do you have copies of the board members? I do. stipulation that was made to the variance granted for lot 63 when it was granted um, that at no point in the future uh, the porch being closed. Um, you can see from the open design here um, we're not looking for any kind of enclosure at all. In fact, we're looking for very open effect. Um, so to the extent anybody's concerned about possible future enclosure, we were more than happy to stipulate that that won't occur. Any railings proposed at all? No, we're going to keep this under the um, the code required. Okay, so there'll be no railing. Height, so that there will be no railing, correct? And this would go from corner to corner of the existing dwelling as? Yeah, it's held in just a foot or so from the corners. Currently, on the existing house you have, uh, you made a reference to a second story being added. Correct. Uh, the, the second story currently is a, a dormer type effect. Would it be 
uh, an extension of the existing first floor wall and your modification? It will be, yes. In fact, on the same drawer that I just passed out, I mean, that's basically also the design of the, the new second story. I mean, that will be the, the view of uh, the appearance of the house. We're basically going to take that dormer and roof off and go straight out. <clears throat> Other than the, than the uh, grant of the variance predicated on a side lot setback as opposed to a front lot setback, do you uh, have any knowledge of the basis uh, on which the variance was granted by this board for, uh, was it seven residents? Or? Correct. Um, uh, I, I don't think I have any other specific knowledge other than talking with the neighbor and she, with the neighbors saying, you know, there, there was no problem with that setback. And in fact, they were very enthusiastic and encouraged us to pursue a porch as well, again, to effectuate some sort, not some sort. I mean, it's a nice community. We've got great neighbors. It's a terrific place to live, and we like to visit with each other. And it just adds to the... Uh, um, the ambiance of the neighborhood, um, and people were very much in favor of it. Lot 63 was a small ranch house, wasn't it? Just right. on the floor? Yeah, if I remember. Yep. How long have you lived in that house? Uh, just over four years. Okay. And you have no plans to build over the porch at all? No. Future plans? No, none whatsoever. <laughs> this will be enough. Have you discussed this with many of the neighbors or most of the neighbors? Or Yeah, I mean, there, there may be a neighbor that we missed, um, but certainly none on that side of the circle, and pretty much we've been right around the whole circle. I mean, it's, it's a small neighborhood. Um, we all know each other. From that point of view, my wife was saying, well, gee whiz, shall we keep getting more signatures? And I said, look, we've got a page full. I mean, um, it has been and you widely did, applauded. <clears throat> you did look at six feet as being the, the minimum required to establish it. We did. And I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't mean, mean to make light of the amount of legwork and talking and measuring and consulting we've done with people and porch owners and driving through town and seeing porches that we like and stopping and talking and talking to builders and so on and so forth as well. Um, you know, this porch is, as some of you may or may know or may not know, I mean, it's not an inexpensive item. Um, it's frankly, surprisingly expensive to add to the house. Part of our thought process is, given the level of investment that it takes to get a porch of this caliber, um, we want it to work. Um. In part of your packet, you submitted a page, two pages, in fact, comparison of neighboring property to subject property. Uh, where did you obtain that information? Actually, um, I did some of the measurements myself, but it was pretty much um, shared by the previous uh, variance applicants um, from their uh, application. Did you make any effort to verify any of these measurements? I, I did, yeah. In what fashion? Tape, Once again, tape measure? Tape measure. I've got a 100-foot tape measure and measuring houses. Okay. There is a... a uh, one discrepancy that I did note, and that is regarding uh, lot 63, where it says it's a 32 foot front setback. In fact, it was a 22 foot front setback uh, existing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was mostly uh, going up to the side where the porch was and measuring uh, at that point. Any other questions from board members? Um, <clears throat> picking up Men Mr. Mendelson's line of questioning earlier, in part of the uh, little enforcement of the ordinance, practical difficulty, uh, item 2B, uh, to the last half of the paragraph, 
ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure accessory structure comparable in size location and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners and even with the depth of the statistics given for the surrounding houses we don't have 10 closer than what you're proposing um, yeah I'm not sure what the question is can you read it, it's not so much a question as it's a point is that it doesn't the um, the request in my mind not, I'm not certain it meets the standard for variance for the from the ordinance can you just read Pete, what you were just <clears throat> it's item 2b and it's the last half of the paragraph i'll pick up the last sentence of it um zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size location and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners so what i think we've accepted in the past is you would need to demonstrate that 10 of your nearest neighbors <clears throat> have a setback less than what you're asking for. Am I correct, Mr. Chair? The 10 of the nearest would not necessarily have to be below minimum, but a comparison to those 10 right. would need to be made. Or the other option is uh, line owners in the immediate neighborhood. And I think it's open for discussion as to whether the entirety of Crescent View Avenue, which is a closed circle, constitutes an immediate neighborhood. Uh, even I'm, houses on the opposite side of the circle. Right. It was always the interpretation by the board that if your house being center, you'd go to one side or the other or take an entire surrounding neighborhood, which in that area, as Jay just mentioned, would be the entire circle. And since Crescent View is indeed a, a closed circle uh, with one access, it, that could be viewed as, a, as an immediate neighborhood, as the ordinance says. So it could be looked at by the board members as so once entire again, Crescent View Avenue. So once again, if we take all the homes on Crescent Avenue, which I assume, Crescent View Ave, which I assume are listed here, we don't have 10. I'll say, I guess with I've never read that. Than. I'm sorry. I've never read that to require it to be 10 variances. That, that I mean, 10. No, not 10, under, uh, not 10 variances previously granted. It would be 10 homes comparable or closer to than what right. it is that you're asking for. I think the emphasis is on comparable. If you add, for instance, 25 feet, then you, you're well over mm -hmm. 10 homes in the, the neighborhood. Um, if you add, for instance, sideline setbacks, um, just in terms of what these set setbacks mean to the overall um, nature or character of the neighborhood. Again, I mean, you're that's, that's a good point because it brings up a de an idea, a, a um, maybe a presentation that it is it's somewhat of a denser area too, if you include some of the side setbacks as well. I think from standing in the neighborhood, um, any observer would say this is very consistent, comparable to every house alongside us and as you wrap right around the neighborhood. I mean, it's not out of the, the norm, um, even by a little bit from what's going on and what has gone on in the neighborhood. Looking, following up on that point, and I do believe that that is a valid point, if you include all setbacks, front and side, which are listed, 20 out of the 21 listed on the first page uh, are indeed less than the variance of 25 feet. Mm -hmm. And three out of three on the second page. So 23 out of 24. I just mentioned as further support for the idea that you can look at side setbacks as comparable a comparison to assess the character, the nature uh, of the neighborhood. It is, a, well, it's not a circle, it's an oval. So many of the lots, for instance, lot 63 are situated so that even the side setback is 
a front to somebody else and the same with the other corners of the oval so to speak so in many instances the the side setbacks are quite comparable if front and side setbacks are both included then it certainly meets the test if it's limited to front setbacks only then there are seven comparable properties in the immediate neighborhood well I, from our point of view I'd say seven less or the same I mean one foot difference seems to me still to be quite comparable so if you added the 25 uh, feet front setback you're back, back up over to uh, the 10 minimum any comment I guess that's all for the moment. Thank you. If, if there are any further questions, we'll call you back up. I'll open the floor to public comment at this time. If we have any members of the audience in favor of the applicant, please Good evening. identify Hi. your name and address. My name is Catherine Miller. I am 7 Crescent View Avenue. I am a former member of the Zoning Board and a neighbor of Mr. Denny's. Uh, I've been watching the, the um, exchanges on television, thought I'd come down share some insight I had. Um, I wasn't, it wasn't long ago that I was sitting on the board considering similar applications, and it, it also wasn't much longer that I was before the board with a, a very comparable situation. I was asking for a six foot variance in the front of my house to add a farmer's porch. I have the variance application here. Um, refresh, refresh my memory as I was watching the television program tonight. And I, I see that our situations were very same, very similar. Um, Mr. Duddy's only asking for a one foot setback in front of the house. Um, I was before the board asking for the six foot feet. Um, I didn't have any trouble getting mine. I explained to the board why the practical difficulty standard had been met. Um, I explained that there would have been a significant economic injury for the denial of my variance because of the aesthetic value that the porch added. Um, not having that variance would have harmed the project. It would have also required me to tell future home buyers that if I was selling my house that I had sought a variance and had been not denied it. Um, I thought that that would have impacted the value because the houses in Crescent View are so unique in that they're purchased mainly for people to add on to. Um, they're very small homes. My home, before I added on, was less than 1,000 square feet. And I know that anybody looking at it would be looking at it for the purposes of, of leveling it completely and adding on. Um, I felt that once I approached the board for variance and was denied a variance, that would have had a significant economic in, injury in that I'd have to tell a future home buyer that. Um, if you look around the neighborhood, the homes are very, um, very similar in that they're close to the close to the road there are many homes that are closer to the road than this than than what the duddies would be trying to do i've seen the project and i think that the porch is really needed to complete their home um, to cut up and these like mr duddy and mrs duddy have explained to me to um to break the house and i think the one foot variance is really is not a big deal if i was on the board tonight i certainly would be granting it um, I think the precedent that's been set in the other variance applications, including my own, it would would require the board to consider this and ex uh, to approve it. So I urge you both to approve it, the board to approve it tonight. And speaking with the neighbors, um, along with the duddies, there's really nobody, I, I can't think of anybody that doesn't fully support the duddies' actions. And I know that there's been some 
questions tonight as to whether every neighbor had been consulted, and I know the deputies have spent a lot of time and effort in making sure that they've dotted all their I's and crossed their T's to be before you tonight. Are, are you lot number 63? I am. Yes. 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 Thank you. So this was the house that you, you were referring to today? Yes. Well, then, then um, <coughs> perhaps you can help me. I was interested in knowing why Mr. Daddy indicated that the variance that was granted to your property was for a side lot setback. Both. I had a front and a side. I had a front to do the porch and a side to go up because my side was already within setback requirements. So I got a double variance. Um, there were, were some restrictions placed on my front porch variance, um, and that was mainly I, that we would never enclose it down the road, and I stipulated that that would be fine. I, I'm not going to speak for Mr. Dottie as to whether that's something that their family can, he's, would... He's already conceded that. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> mine was, I could put screens in it if I ever wanted to make the screened porch, but no heating or break down the, the exterior wall to go into that. Um, I think that that, that was our, we, we had no problem with that. Um, and Mr. Duddy, as you just said, just um, said the same. The Duddy spend so much time outside the front of their house <laughs> with their kids that um, I just, I talking to them, this is a porch that they would use and appreciate. Having it down the extra foot makes a big difference. Um, I went over with Mr. Duddy and he came to my porch and we, we, we kind of measured out where that the length would be and I think he was I can't remember the measurements now but we were trying to just we tried to distinguish what it would be like for his porch if it was within the variance um, because he, he didn't want to have to come unnecessarily and it simply wasn't working we had furniture arranged and it, it, it wasn't feasible it wasn't worth the money and it, it aesthetically wasn't going to look right you couldn't pass each other. You, you had a chair, you'd have to pick up the chair to move it. Um, and I was in a similar situation. That's why I became, bef I came before the board to ask for the same variance. Um, I asked for it, I think I was August of 2001. And the same standard, really, it wasn't much different. Thank you. What is the depth of your porch? Mine, I, th uh, I think it's six feet. And the two foot, the two foot left side property variance. Did that involve the porch or the primary going dwelling? Up, going up, the, the, um, my side how, of the house was already within the side setback. So in order just to increase the volume of the house, I needed the variance. So your your porch did not. My porch go was stayed. Two foot. My house never. The blueprint of my house, if you didn't take the porch, would not have increased. I just went simply up. I made a, a ranch into a like a farmhouse, um, but the porch was what really threw it off for the front of the house. So on the side <clears throat> setback variance, you you didn't change the footprint of your house. You nope. you merely went up. No, nope. you were already yeah. setting in your setback at the yeah. time. So I, when when I was before the board, the the focus of the inquiry was the porch mm -hmm. because we've had so many other applicants that. <clears throat> Except the footprint on the side was already there. That was beyond my control. Um, it was the focus we had was mainly on why I needed a front variance. What was the magnitude of, of the front lot setback variance? The front variance was six feet. Did that six feet include six the feet stairs over? by any chance? Were the um, stairs included in that six? No, the stairs even go beyond that. Which is different than the applicant's request. Absolutely. He's got he doesn't have stairs included in his plan. And stairs are not That's counted. correct. The, they're not counted as part. No, Mr. Of the Mr. Only Mr. The Smith usually doesn't count them. Yeah, that's so. eager oh, um, I had our house was 22 feet to the road, I believe, and the porch would have made it 16 feet to the road, which is certainly more of an encumbrance than the duddies are. But it's the houses are one house apart. They're very similarly situated. I, the standard is the same, and the precedent's really been set. So, if, any other questions for Ms. Miller? 
thank you is there anyone else in the audience who is here to speak in favor of the applicant anyone in opposition we'll close the public portion of this hearing this variance appeal and open it up to board discussion struggle with the definition for the practical difficulty as it applies to this um, it's it's hard to see the the significant economic injury <clears throat> argument I, mean, I struggle with that one and also um, <clears throat> if the variance were not granted for a six foot porch the applicant would still have an opportunity for a five foot porch so I'm not sure he's being denied an opportunity to benefit from his um, from his property again I'm, I'm not really familiar with this as, as well as other members of the of the board but there are a lot of um, uh, measurements taken that may not have been as accurate as maybe they should have been or could be so we'd be un you know maybe we're talking a uh, six inches as opposed to a, a full you know one foot variance I mean I, uh, that would be my concern, uh, you know, in understanding what we're really dealing with here. And vice versa, if we could be talking about more than too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it just seems it's a little bit, um, it's not, not clear to me that, it's a, that it is, in fact, one foot. So. That's a valid point, and we have discussed that before in similar type cases with the we're faced with the difficulty of establishing front property lines accurately and without a standard boundary survey of multiple related properties then this becomes uh, difficult uh, due to access and expense uh, to obtain this uh, we have informally relied on mortgage surveys from the applicant and with submission of uh, measurements obtained uh, based on related properties from uh, edge of road which is not at all considered to be the the point of the property line in most cases it's not uh, most residential streets in Cape Elizabeth have a 50-foot right-of-way most travel ways are 21 22 feet uh, with obvious uh, allotment for gutters and culverts and water drainage. Um, in many cases, the, the yard does go up to the edge of the asphalt. So this becomes a practical, difficult situation to firmly establish the setback for multiple pieces of property. Um, I believe that's one reason that the ordinance states uh, uh, the, the general neighborhood, either the, the 10 nearest properties, if it's a, a spread out neighborhood, or if it's a condensed neighborhood, much like Crescent View, it could be construed as the uh, immediate neighborhood. That's why I asked uh, Mr. Duddy if he had confirmed these, and he stated to the best of his ability he had. Uh, based on the, the limited setback requirements or uh, uh, rules that we have established measurements that we have the, the only basis we have is the market survey that he submitted as part of his packet and he showed that to be the market survey showed that to be a 30-foot setback where that is in relation to the street or asphalt we don't know uh, so at that point it becomes uh, uh, the feel the, of the neighborhood, the flavor of the neighborhood, as well as uh, measurements as he submitted in his form, showing the front setbacks and side setbacks of, of multiple properties. In that neighborhood, on a drive-through basis, you do have the feeling of a condensed 
Absolutely. That's correct. Right. Uh, compact, <coughs> uh, very interrelated neighborhood feeling, flavor to the, to the whole, to I'd say every house in the neighborhood. I, I think uh, I, I agree with Steve and to the extent that I'm wrestling with um, the language in the, in the uh, ordinances here, and, and th that's why I asked Mr. Duddy if, uh, if, if he was familiar with them um, and how we could get around a strict interpretation of, the, of that ordinance. Um, I think on the face of it, we're still faced with, with, with a bit of a dilemma uh, with, res with respect to the ordinance, but um, given the flavor of the neighborhood, given the fact uh, that there was a very recent precedent uh, for the grant of a variance here, uh, I, I feel it would be inherently unfair not to grant uh, the variance. Reading the ordinance, I'll read this, uh, to be significant economic in injury is defined as placing the applicant for, vari for variance at a disadvantage to the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood or in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. Um, word comparable in size and location. In this instance, could reflect the, the feeling or flavor of the neighborhood. Any comments? That? That's somewhat where I was going with it. Um, once again, comparable <clears throat> to houses in the nearby area with porches. Um, he, Mr. Duddy, would still be able to have a porch without the need for a variance that would be comparable to other homes with porches in the area, five foot versus the six foot porch. And by not granting this variance, does that extra foot, or does that lack of an extra foot cause the, sec the economic injury? Does it put him at a disadvantage to surrounding homes? That's what I'm struggling with, and once again, we talk about a, a variance that was granted earlier in having set precedent. Do we then go by precedent, or do we try to enforce the ordinance consistently? If I feel our goal should be to enforce the ordinance consistently. Uh, We are faced with the situation that at this time, uh, when Ms. Miller's application was approved, that the ordinance was fairly new at that time in, in switching from undue hardship to the practical difficulty interpretation of, of the ordinance. Uh, over the period of, of time since then, which is been almost two years. Uh, our understanding and interpretation of the ordinance has, has changed. I still feel that, that uh, in view of the setbacks of all of the properties in the neighborhood, that an argument could be made uh, that it, that would render the porch uh, to be comparable in size and location to uh, uh, to many of the houses in the immediate neighborhood. Please, Ms. Miller, please. I agree that when I came before the board, this, this um, the standard was fairly new. It wasn't brand new. I wasn't the first applicant before the board with the new undue hardship. There has been no superior court decisions or any other interpretive 
language which would have educated the board in any other regard what the board your interpretation of the ordinance is really based on your own interpretation there has been no instruction from any other higher authority to further educate us so I think that it's important to go back and look at what precedent had been made at the time I came before you I think that I made a, a compelling enough argument based on significant economic injury and the practical difficulty to have the variance granted. I don't think that anybody here tonight, <coughs> I hope nobody here tonight, would say that that was granted in error. I think that using that precedent, along with the same language and the same information that you have, should render the same interpretation that was made in August of 2001. I think the board spent a lot of time deliberating over my application, and I think they came to the right decision. Two of you are the same members, which rendered an unanimous verdict when I was before you. The significant economic injury is that a five-foot port is essentially rendered unusable. A, a chair could be about three feet. When you have a railing, which is another eight inches, you, the five-foot porch can really just go down quickly. A door, a swinging door is 36 inches. So there's three feet right there. And then if you have a rail, that's four feet. That's leaving a foot for a person to stand. It's just simply not enough of a space. You need a six foot space as a minimum for a porch. Um, any builder that would do it in less is really doing a disservice to, to its clients. I think that when you look at the other houses, as Dr. Chapman has just pointed out, it, the houses are similar in the space in the condo. I think that not being able to build the desired size porch would be a practical difficulty to this applicant. I also think that you're correct in that the measurements may not be, we don't know with certainty whether they are here, but the application, the um, zoning ordinance doesn't require an applicant to get specific measurements. We've always used estimated measurements in the past. The numbers that the studies are using are the same numbers that I used, and at that time, nobody questioned whether they were accurate. You did the applicant here tonight has done a very good job in estimating them accurately without trespassing, without going onto other people's properties, and without having to have a full-fledged survey of the whole entire neighborhood. He's asking for the absolute most. He's asking for a foot. It really could be less. In reality, it could be a six-foot, a six-inch, um, six-inch very, it could be eight inches. I think that the one foot is what he needs to ask for for the, to make it right. But in reality, it, it could be a lot less um, that because of the property lines being unknown. I think that the other thing is, and you look at the other houses, there's probably a lot of other houses that are really a lot closer that we just don't know because of the way the road's laid. So my point's just being, the standard hasn't changed. Nobody has told you you have to interpret it any differently. If you're more experienced and more knowledgeable about it, it's only based on what you think the standard should be. It was granted back then, and I really think that it, it should be consistently upheld so that other applicants come and know what to expect, and um, consistent results are important before a board. As I've indicated, the, the, uh, the president, which you have said um, troubles me in, in light of the ordinance. Um, but that being said, and I, I, I feel that the president had <coughs> been set uh, to uh, then arbitrarily make the decision not to grant a variance to Mr. Duddy uh, would be unfair. But, it, but, but that having been said, um, where do you draw the line? You, uh, you seem to have gotten, uh, if I understood what you were saying correctly, uh, a, a three-foot variance. Um, if, you're only, if your porch is only 22 feet back now from the street, not- No, it was, my house porch. was 22 feet. It, my, my porch is 16 feet back from the street. So your- Variance was six feet. All right, so, so it, it, I, I think that it, there has to be lines drawn. My point simply is that you can tonight do two things. You can find this application has a significant economic injury 
if this is not granted and that the the homeowner would have practical difficulty in complying with the statute and the ordinance and that conjunction with the precedent that has been set allows you to render this application acceptable. Well, but that is, again, responsive to my question. The question is, at what point, if, let's say that someone from number 12 came in, Mr. Duddy's neighbor, and asked for a, wanted to put a wider porch in, said that architecturally, because of the nature of their house, they were doing, instead of blowing up the roof line, putting in a shingle-style house or something, and needed to put a large deck on the front, and wanted a 10-foot setback variance. How would you respond to that? Well, obviously, the 10 feet is greater than the 6 feet and the 1 foot that's before you tonight. I think it's dangerous to speculate on hypothetical situations, and often courts don't do that. The courts consider what's before them, as you should tonight. Using that in conjunction with what has been set is a safer methodology than relying on pure speculation on situations that we don't have all the factors for and we don't have in our control. Thanks. You submitted an extensive list of measurements of which Mr. Duddy used as his basis. How did you obtain all of your measurements? Many of them I went onto the properties when I could ask the homeowner permission, and I did it with my husband in measurements. In the ones that we couldn't, we used what was available in town hall, or we estimated based on the, you could see the houses line up. I mean, it's a pretty square block. For the front, we were able to stand on one property, look down them, and the homes were purposely designed so that each home would have a little bit of a water view, so they're staggered. So the homes closest to the water are set back the most, and as you go in towards the Duddy's and my home, they get progressively closer and closer to the edge of the road so that each side window can see the water. So in some cases, I was able to say, okay, I can't get onto this property or I can't get an accurate measurement. Let me add two feet because consistent with all the other homes, they stagger in. I don't remember if it's exactly two feet, but I remember using the methodology at the time. So admittedly, many of your measurements were estimates. No, I didn't say admittedly. Many. I said some of them were estimated. I did it the best I could, and we went to the small neighborhood. We know a lot of them. We went on to a lot of the properties. But how did you know where the front property line ended? Nobody does, and that's not something, when any applicant comes before you, you don't require a survey of the whole neighborhood and everybody's house to make a decision. The numbers we've always relied on on the board have always been just that, they're estimates. And that's all the ordinance requires the applicant to provide. On the front setbacks, however, there is a way to more accurately determine it based on the right-of-way. You determine what the right-of-way is, and then you measure from the center of the road, and you're able to determine. But even that's difficult in situations where the road isn't paved properly or there's turns or it's not a straight chute. The road hasn't been repaved in years. It's not totally dilapidated, but there's certainly areas that it's eroded or it's not as straight. So I agree that there is a... There is a point of reference somewhat. To the extent that that helps, and I did use that when I did complete my measurements. And again, I just point out that my measurements were accepted by the board once before, and they weren't strictly scrutinized at the time. I did the best we could, and I think that they were... They're solid. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Dowdy, if he's available. Pardon me? May I ask you a question? Certainly. Would you... There seems to be some question as to the true setback for your home, and it may make a difference. I was wondering if you'd be interested in taking, perhaps tabling the issue for this evening and coming back before us next month 
just to see if there is a ver if uh, if there are any further additions you'd like to make to the application. Um, well, I've got to stop to, to think. I mean, the construction hope. I've already been pushed back one month, and our construction schedule has been pushed back one month, and so the question is, does it get pushed back another month, and does that run into time availability issues with the contractor and so forth? So just let me consider that for a moment. Take um, I guess my, my response, other than do I want to table it, is <clears throat> whether it's one foot, three feet, six inches, eight feet, 10 feet, or 12 feet, um, the variance is relative to, uh, because we don't know exactly where the, the front line is. What we do know is where our house sits in relationship to every other house on the street, where the road is to every other house on the street, and therefore what the comparable measure is to every other house on the street. What we're asking for can be thought of in this way. We're asking for a one-foot variance relative to every other house on the street. And I don't quite understand fundamentally then why if the ordinance doesn't require a survey, and I checked with Bruce six ways to Sunday, and he confirmed that it does not require a survey, that you, then it isn't sufficient to have, in this case, a neighborhood that is so close with the houses so apparently situated relative to each other so that you can literally stand on the street and say, okay, this house is up here, this house is up here, that um, you need to fix with certainty on the face of the earth where the front line is. I mean, we know in terms of um, the comparison with every other house on the street on both sides of the circle, it seems to me that fundamentally the ordinance is about not letting somebody do something in a neighborhood <clears throat> that is going to wreak havoc with the character of the neighborhood. It is fundamentally a relative-based ordinance. And there's nothing in this application that suggests, suggests that this port with a one-foot variance is anything that goes anywhere outside of the nature of, of the neighborhood. Responding to Mr. Mendelson, where do you draw the line? I think you draw the line in a case-by-case -case basis with reference to all of the factors involving the character of the neighborhood. You can't say, for instance, um, you know, what's to distinguish a one-foot request for a six-foot porch versus a 10-foot deck? I mean, I think you then would take a look at the neighborhood. Is there any other house in the neighborhood with a front deck? No, it's a, it's a change to the neighborhood. Therefore, maybe the 10 feet request is subject to some greater scrutiny. But I mean, I think where you draw the line is, you know, based on how you conclude the character of the, of the neighborhood impacts the particular property. Um, you know, if what we need to do is go out and get a survey, you know, I just don't understand it. The ordinance doesn't require it. Nobody else has been required to do that. And in terms of the front lot line, it is the same as it is for every other house. And we know exactly where the porch is going to be relative to every other house. It may not need to be a survey. Um, all I was suggesting is that you have found the rear pins. If you can take, get a better idea as to what the true right of way is from center, and I'm sure that Bruce can help you out with that as well, you may find that you're actually close enough. But, you know, the right, of the, the right of way is not the front of our property. The right of way is just an easement over our property. That is, the front of, I mean, there may be a sidewalk easement or, or whatever else, but our property still has its own front lot line. We may not have absolute fee interest and be able to exclude everyone else from that portion of the property, but our front lot line is our front lot line. I mean, if the, if the road is... Are you saying that you own to the, to the end of the pavement? I'm saying that I own to wherever our front lot line is, right. measured from the rear pin. Okay, I agree with that. Um, and then that's, I think Mr. Chatnick brought it up earlier, is that the, end, uh, the edge of the pavement is not necessarily the end of the right of way. You're in a butter to the right of way. Right. And I think we may... I, I would like to see some more clarification on that, and then I thought you might want to... Um, possibly take the time to, to bring some clarity to it. The, the issue of a boundary survey, if I could address that, has, or the survey has been addressed and discussed, and, and cost is prohibitive to require that for members to bring up applicants to bring to the board, to have a standard boundary survey, just to answer. And, and our interest was, not our interest, the, the, the Bruce indicated, Mr. Smith indicated that it was a cost factor, could be a burden on people if that was required. 
I got a price estimate for a boundary survey. It was 2,500 bucks. And it just seemed relative to the project, and given the ordinance doesn't require it, that was a heck of a sum of money to spend for something that wasn't required. I agree. Um, I, I guess the question still, still resides. Would I prefer to have it tabled than have a no vote? Obviously, yes. Do I feel that, that this application needs to have that? No, but if I'm going to get a no vote, I would much prefer to have it tabled. Well, unless I misunderstand you, Steve, your vote really shouldn't be put again then anyway, because what you were suggesting is that the survey might indicate that he doesn't need a variance. Absolutely. That's, that's correct. Exactly. That so, so I think that's what his, the board might. Yeah, so his vote really should not, should not go up or down predicated on your willingness or unwillingness to, to have the survey. At least I, I hope it would. It doesn't change well, where, what I believe now. I just thought that you have a feel for where the board sits currently and that you might want to take the opportunity to bring more information to the entire board next time. Right. So if it does, I mean, just so that I'm clear, if it doesn't change where you are now, then if we come back and we don't need a variance, then we're just going to withdraw the Move. application. You don't even need to come and back. If you no. vote no tonight and then we subsequently go out and do a measurement that we don't need a variance, then we don't need a variance. So I guess is. Uh, what I'm thinking through is there's no need to table it. That is, you can vote on it, and if it appears subsequently that we didn't need one after all, then we just build the porch and we don't have to put off the construction time kit. That's, that's your, entirely your discretion. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't say enough how I do agree that you need to um, interpret the ordinance consistently. Um, and in this case, consistently would seem to suggest approval based on very similar information being prepared previously. The ordinance, in terms of looking at other properties, says comparable. It doesn't say that you have to have 10 other houses with porches within 24 feet of the road. It doesn't even say that you have to look at other houses with porches. You just have to look at comparable properties. I think the information here certainly does suggest that there are comparable properties greater than 10 um, that form a good basis here. Can we build a five-foot porch Probably we wouldn't put the money into a five-foot porch. You know, if you're going to do this kind of renovation, you know, you're paying building designers, you're paying contractors, you're trying to get things right. We really have sought a lot of information about the nature of a porch of a certain width versus being too narrow. Um, it makes a big difference to us for whether we build a five-foot porch or a six-foot porch. In the terms of the ordinance, um, I think that is a substantial hardship um, or a, a, a rises to the level of practical uh, difficulty because if you can't get a porch that works, you know, no, whether it's the next homeowner or ourselves, we're not going to want to have a porch that doesn't work. Um, that 12 inches makes a big difference to this application. I wouldn't have been here last month and come back this month and so on and so forth if, if we weren't committed to the idea that that is a significant practical uh, difficulty for us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? No, oh, thank you. It's my feeling in this situation that based on the measurements and documentation that was presented for the neighborhood in general, that this house or this addition, this variance could be for the porch, could be considered as comparable in size and location. To a number of the other houses in the neighborhood. That's my personal feeling. That the interpretation of the ordinance, that this could be uh, seen as comparable in size and location. Any other comment? 
Are there any in the audience in opposition to the uh, variance appeal? Hearing none. We should vote on the conclusions, the finding, the elements. Just as a uh, recap of the ordinance, there are eight elements of this section of the, ver of the ordinance that we need to vote on for an approval of an appeal of a variance. The ordinance states that a majority of the board membership need to vote in the affirmative. In that case, that's four members, which is unanimous vote since we have four present. And all eight elements of the appeal of the variance need to be found in the affirmative to uh, approve the uh, variance appeal. Jay, just a point of order. If there were going to be um, uh, some restrictions placed on this porch, i.e. not to be closed in, or for that matter, screened, whatever, although is that to be inserted before or after the vote, or how does that, what's the process? Uh, that should be made as part of the, if the motion is approved, that should be inserted as, as uh, uh, an amendment to the motion. To the motion. Um, it's been Mr. Smith, uh, code enforcement officer's concern in the past. Uh, he, I will voice this in his absence because I know that he would state this, that he finds this difficult to monitor uh, the fact of uh, construction details some distance in the future, uh, whether the porch is enclosed or to be remained open or an open design porch. Uh, it is it is no, noted that if the porch is to be enclosed in the future, that a uh, a building permit would be required and that would be addressed at that time. So for us to put that restriction on this at, for this current motion or this for current appeal uh, would be difficult to monitor and would be handled in, with any future building permit. With that At that point, we'll vote on the uh, findings. clarify that? All eight of the findings, all eight of the elements of the variance appeal do have to be found in the affirmative in favor and voted on in the affirmative, which in our case is four members of the board, right. to grant the variance appeal. Any questions? Uh, the, the first element, I'll read number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All in favor? It's four in favor, zero opposed. Number two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. All in favor? Opposed? That's three in favor, one opposed. Uh, 
I'll go ahead and continue with elements. Uh, number three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All in favor? Four in favor, zero opposed. Number four, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All in favor? Four in favor, zero opposed. The practical difficulty, number five, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All in favor? It's four in favor, zero opposed. Number six, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor? Opposed? It's three in favor. One opposed. Number seven, the granting of variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? It's four in favor, zero opposed. Number eight, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland areas described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor? It's four in favor, zero opposed. Mr. Duddy, the requirement of the variance is that all eight elements be improved, approved. It requires four members to approve each of the eight elements. Six of the elements were approved. Two were not approved. So your variance appeal must be denied according to the to the ordinance and I'll state a motion that it will be in the negative in this case since it's a denial <coughs> where <coughs> whereas the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals has found that, that the applicant has failed to meet the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified in, in the ordinance are met. The application for Michael and Jennifer Duddy for a frontline property variance as written be denied. Second case of new business to hear the request of Richard P. Barker, number four, Boathouse Lane, tax map R03, lot 9H, to reconstruct an, an existing structure within 75 feet of the high water line of the Atlantic Ocean. Would you please state your name and address? Uh, yes, good evening. Um, my name is Richard Barker, and um, we are summer residents at 4 Boathouse Lane. And I have with me this evening my wife, Julie, and also our contractor, Donald Haynes. Um, in terms of uh, a little bit of background, uh, when we submitted our application, we also submitted uh, a plot plan, some photographs, um, and a um, letter of explanation. Uh, my wife and I purchased this cottage at Boathouse Lane last July. Over last summer, we consulted with several contractors, the town office here in Cape Elizabeth, specifically with uh, Bruce Smith. We consulted with our neighbors <coughs> and also with our landowner. <coughs> the land at uh, Boathouse Lane is at People's Cove, and that is, uh, excuse me, that is all common land. Uh, and we discussed uh, with our neighbors and our landowner, um, town officials, contractors, 
the different options and restrictions that we would have in renovating this cottage and setting it up properly for the future as a result of all of these discussions i came away from these discussions knowing that because we are within seventy five feet of the high water mark we would not be allowed to change the existing foundation footprint or the deck footprint and we have not that if we changed any cubic volume the increase could not exceed thirty percent of the existing cottage and then furthermore uh, at people's cove any changes that i would make to the cottage would have to be approved by my neighbors also uh, by our landowner so by fall after a lot of uh, discussions uh, we decided that our plan for the cottage would be to replace the aluminum siding with cedar shakes we would put on new roof shingles we would replace the uh, door on the front and two windows that are on the northeast exposure and that we would rebuild the flat shed roof that was over the sun porch on the front of the cottage facing the ocean with trusses that were consistent with the height and pitch of the rest of the cottage, thus resolving the known loading problems from a poorly constructed shed roof that was built maybe some 50 years ago. Uh, this cottage has been in its location for approximately 100 years. Uh, no square footage would be added. The cubic volume increase in the sunroom roof would be less than 5%. Our landowner and our neighbors agreed with our plan, and we selected Donald Haynes to be our contractor. This spring, as winter finally cleared, his assessment after uh, really having the opportunity to get at the property much closer, his assessment was that we not only should uh, put the new sunroom roof uh, and have it replaced, but that we should put new roof trusses on approximately two-thirds of the cottage, keeping the same elevation, same pitch, but just strengthening the roof. And also the east wall of the cottage should be rebuilt to provide for proper strength. He applied for and received a permit of work estimated at $50,000, but was not aware, nor was I, after my consultations of last uh, summer and last fall, that we also needed to apply for a ZBA application C approval, which governs reconstructions of buildings that are within 75 feet of the high water mark. What has happened here is that our renovation project has grown to become a reconstruction project, and we were not aware that this triggered the need for this additional approval. In fact, we were not aware of it until Bruce Smith uh, did a site inspection in late May, um, and that was very late in the construction cycle. On June 6, we submitted our application C approval form, a cover letter of explanation, a plot plan, several photographs, and we are here tonight to attempt to right this error by being here this evening to seek approval, although admittedly late. In summary, we apologize for requesting this reconstruction so late, but we feel that it should be approved for the following reasons. Um, first, and these are the primary points in application C, uh, we did not change our existing footprint of the deck or the foundation. No square footage was added, and in application C, it can be improved by as much as 30%. The change in the flat roof over the sun porch added less than 5% to the cubic volume of the cottage, well within the 30% limit that is uh, allowed under the application C. Uh, also, the foundation is cement block. It is in very good condition. Uh, there is no possibility to move the cottage, my assigned lot of land, um, and we can talk about the plot plan as we go on. My assigned lot of land is 60 feet by 100 feet deep, and part of that includes Boathouse Lane, which is an access road to the cottage immediately to my east. Also, the city sewer and, and uh, water lines run underneath that road, so there's no, there's no way to, on my lot, reposition my cottage and get it further away from the ocean. 
the cottage is on town water and on town sewer the cost of renovation exceeded the fifty percent threshold of the assessed value which is really what triggered the need for application C uh, um, and that occurred because of the age of the cottage it's a hundred years old the desire of our contractor Donald Haynes to do a thorough job in resolving structural issues and the discovery of problem areas as we progressed. The project uh, uh, is essentially complete. Uh, it has been approved by my neighbors, by our landowner, and is in keeping with the seaside cottage community that has long existed for so long at People's Point. Uh, we ask the board uh, your help in having us correct this um, uh, oversight in the approval process um, because the cottage um, is coming out fine with the good work of our contractor. We want to make sure that we have all of the paperwork in place uh, so that although admittedly late, uh, we are well within, in our opinion, um, the guidelines of application C. Um, I also would like to bring to your attention that uh, on, on uh, June 5th, we submitted our information, but uh, recently on June 20th, at the request of my abutting neighbor, um, they suggested that I more uh, accurately depict just exactly where our deck is in relation to our assigned lot. There are really no offsets here, it's just, uh, and, and so I don't know if you have my plot plan that was revised on June 20th or not. I have, I have copies. It's exactly the one I submitted, except I more clearly delineated where that deck actually is. And it is two feet to the east of, outside of my assigned lot. Uh, and I believe, yes, my... <laughs> That's it. My, my neighbor is still here and can... Do, uh, we have no issue that it's there, it's just that they made a point, and I agree with them, we should, we should portray it accurately, for the record. And that address of your neighbor would be what? I'm sorry? What is the address of the neighbor? Uh, the neighbor is 6 Boathouse Lane. Thank you. Joe Agnes Pascarella, who is here? Any questions by board members? Can you share with us the nature of the, you own the cottage, yet you do not own the land that it's on, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. People's Point, and an area also called People's Cove, uh, is a piece, a fairly large piece of private property that has been in the family uh, for many years. I think all the way back to the name Peoples. Uh, there are some 17 or 18 cottages, turn of the century <clears throat> cottages, that are really being preserved. Um, and the owner um, has restrictions to make sure that there are no macadam roads. Um, we, any changes we make to any of our cottages have to be approved by our neighbors, by her, um, any work that we do on any of the common land to clear any shrubbery or anything, it has to all be approved by her, so that we together can preserve uh, this small piece of uh, Maine that's, uh, in, you know, that's, that's in that area. So do you actually lease the land from the owner, or is that the arrangement? We, a we actually rent the land. In Exhibit B, um, you have at the lower, maybe lower inch of it, it says high water mark, but then up, upwards is a ledge pin that defines high water mark. What's the distinction between those two? I understand the high water mark is probably where the, the, um, the tide ends and the, there's a bank of seaweed along it. It is meant to be the same. The, uh, this would be an aerial view looking down 
and the pin is some six or seven feet up on the ledge but defining the the point of where the highest high water comes up to the beach and that pin has been in existence a long time i mean that's 50 plus years. traditionally in the past we have used that high water mark as the uh, as the distinction and 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 to the best of my ability and i consulted with bruce on this we we think that the pin was referenced in prior allocations of land because it defined, I mean, at one point in time, the Coast Guard had, a, had, had leased some of that land for a boathouse. And at the time that that happened, and that was 50 odd years ago, that pin was a reference point. So we think that's the, a good reference for the high water mark. Okay. Oh, also on exhibit A, it shows the the roof line being carried across, which I believe onto the deck. Is that the sun porch that you were speaking of earlier? No? No, the roof line has not changed at all. Nothing to the deck is wide open. It's not that Right. But that sun room that goes up, it is kind of an L-shaped cottage that did not change at all, except for the new construction. What we, on exhibit A, uh, I, I have neighbors in uh, similar small cottages behind us that may be 75 feet back, 75 yards back, but have very pretty views to the Portland Lighthouse. And they look past this corner of my property. And to satisfy myself and them that if I brought that sunroof uh, up to the rest of the existing roof line, their being behind my cottage, they would not see it. And I, the only way that we believe that we could really do that is my brother-in-law and I constructed the uh, ridge pole and the, um, what's the, uh, but mm -hmm. we, we constructed a, a simulation of what the roof would look like so they would see it. And we, and we left it up actually all winter. Um, so there would be no question about what we were doing. And it was, and it was approved. So going back to your statement, statement earlier, that's the shed roof that you're replacing to a pitched roof. Yes, it is. It's no higher than any other point. That right? is correct. And you can see, and that, it's that small triangle that represents something less than or just less than 5% of the cubic volume of the existing cottage. Right, you, you didn't actually gain any square footage, it's just... No, no. Nothing. Right. no. The only thing that changed was we took a, a possible heavy snow load and... Dissipated it. Correct. But you haven't opened it up inside to a cathedral ceiling. Actually, we did open it up inside to a cathedral ceiling. You have? Yes. Didn't change the square footage. Yep. Just that we had an unusable attic area that now the ceiling inside the cottage is a foot and a half higher or something like that. So your overall square footage did not change the building's footprint, did not change either? No, no, not, not the deck. But much more open because of this change though? Yes. Because you had a shed roof as opposed to? Correct. Yes. That would be 5% of the I think our square footage is 879 square feet, but um, it's fine. <clears throat> Are you doing renovations on the deck? Uh, no, uh, we improved the footings on the deck. Strengthened the footings on the deck, which I did. Sorry? Any other questions? None for me. Administratively, when a permit was was initially applied and for and granted, why would this have not been triggering this uh, application? You need to come to. We need you to approach the, and identify yourself, please. <clears throat> My name is Paul Haynes. I'm the contractor. 
when I applied for this, and when you walk to this property, if you've been there and seen it, you would automatically go there and think very expensive, uh, very costly. I think that that was an oversight on the Bruce Smith's part, not to catch that and, and not see that. Um, when he came to do his frame inspection, he informed me of that fact that it was an oversight on his part, and he probably should not have approved the permit until we had come to this board. At that time, he, he went over and told me what we had to do, and I met with the homeowners, and we went through the whole process, and here we are tonight. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Barker? No. No, thank you. Thank you. We'll open the floor to public comment. Are there any comments? In I, like I said, I was the contractor. Um, being unaware of the 50% rule is, uh, uh, when you walk there and see the property, like I said, you would think a very expensive, 200 to $300,000 just for the view and the location of the property. Uh, not thinking that it was only worth substantially less than that. I didn't know that the building was on lease land. I thought that it was all one package. Uh, probably ignorance on my part, maybe. But like I said, I did have a building permit from the town and, and I think we did meet the criteria for the approval of this package. I guess that's all I really have. I think I, I think I should make one other comment too, and that is, uh, uh, we are summer residents here in Cape Elizabeth. We're from uh, Portland originally, but in the winter time we are in Florida. And I told our contractor, I have all the approvals. Now, do you get the permit? This was in the fall because we were heading to Florida. I said, do do I get the permit or do you? He says, no. He says, I get the permit. That's what the contractor does. But I, I told him, I have all the approvals. I thought I did. So I, I'm making the presentation tonight because I feel this is an oversight on, on our part as owners, more so than on a contractor. I have a question. The, if you, yes. The greenhouse, when you're facing your property, the greenhouse to your left. Yes. What is the status of that house? Uh, that home is, uh, has an owner, um, and she, is, uh, she has plans uh, to do some type of renovation. Um, we've talked with her the past few years. She hasn't actually done that. She's talked with Bruce several times. Um, other than that, I mean, there's no immediate plans to do anything, although there, I, I know in her mind she is intending to do something. And she's aware of, of your construction? Oh, yes, she approved it. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments by members of the audience? In favor? is Joe Agnes Pasquarella and I'm the abutter at Six Boat House, which is the house above the Barker's house. Um, first of all, I'd like to say the only reason I requested that correction on the uh, diagram was that in the future, uh, I thought as a historical record that should be recorded here in case anything ever happened with the land down there to show the depict where exactly the deck did fall and if the deck ever did come off that it would not be rebuilt over that uh, land unless the owner of the land decided that that was uh, okay to do. But I think their renovation has enhanced that property and it is uh, detracting no one and as I say there was no square footage added and 
I personally would like to see the board approve this because I see no reason not to at this point, except that, you know, maybe it was uh, an oversight on somebody's part, but the work's been done. It's actually elevated the neighborhood. And uh, if you've ever gone down there, you will see that it's probably a good thing that's happened there, not a bad thing. Regarding your comment on the <clears throat> lot line, since this is not considered, we do not consider this Absolutely. property line. Absolutely. So no ruling that we are making this Absolutely. evening uh, affects any property set right. back because of the unusual situation right. where all the property is owned by one individual and you, I believe you are simply leasing Absolutely. property space and right. do not have an ownership and therefore the town does not recognize property right. lines. Uh, our only address for this evening is due to the 75 foot setback from the right. water line. Right. I just wanted to Yeah, that. it's just that for the historical record. record that it, you never know down the road what will be counted in the historical record for this property because it's such a strange situation there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any opposition in the audience? Seeing none, we'll close this to public comment. Um, discussion by the board. Well, we, we were, we're reading the uh, reconstruction and replacement um, components on page 42. It talks about um, the damage or destruction um, of 50% of the market value may be replaced provided the building permit is obtained within one year of the date of the damage destruction. Further, it, it excludes the normal maintenance repair from that activity. I mean, it appears this is wear and tear or is what triggered it in the first place, if you will, a load-bearing roof and siding. I, and try to, I try, to, try to grapple with that as to how this fits and how, you know. I read it as well, and my initial conclusion on it was that it dealt more with uh, storm damage, perhaps, <clears throat> a hurricane or uh, significantly high tides. That would have damaged the that damaged the structure. Therefore, the ordinance gives a provision for that property to be replaced or rebuilt. I'm not sure, and then this is where I lose the thread on it. I'm not sure if it if it has a um, a provision in it for just normal wear and tear, or just deterioration over time. Any wood structure next to salt water, I doubt, would last indefinitely. In this situation, since this is an approved reconstruction by the code enforcement officer, since he has approved this, the, this is normal maintenance, normal wear and tear. The, my understanding, and I've discussed this uh, previously is that the design of the, the roof precluded proper reconstruction. Uh, there are two elements that are relevant to this case, and that is that the size of the lot does not preclude, does not allow for any replacement of, of the dwelling. And the fact that uh, the physical condition of the and type of foundation present is adequate, is acceptable, does not have to be rebuilt uh, in view of the fact that the property is not enlarged, that uh, wear and tear, in this case maintenance, uh, extensive maintenance, is, is an acceptable, uh, it is acceptable to be done under this situation. With the the triggering factor being the cause, the cost of it. And that was 
<coughs> clearly uh, misestimated in advance. Two, two other points that I would find in <coughs> that would lead me to vote in favor of the variance is that the uh, square footage of the house has not changed, nor has its footprint. And it obviously received significant review by the abutting neighbors or, the, or those within the uh, close proximity to the property. Any other comments? And I think that it, it appears that the, the Barkas have taken the time to really review all of this with, with, the, with their neighbors and with the owners. So, you know, it seems to me that that, uh, again, is in, in, their, in, the, in their favor. <coughs> Was the work stopped completely as a result of this issue? He, no, he gave us the opportunity to protect the building from the elements. Okay. And at that particular point, all we had to do was put the side of the the building was basically not. Right. Elements of the conclusion. Any other comments from board members? elements of the conclusion that are relevant to this case. Um, <coughs> the conclusion being the standard being the building does meet the setback to the greatest practical extent due to the following, the size of the lot and the location of the travel way preclude any re <coughs> relocation. Uh, I believe there it was noted that there is uh, utilities under under the roadway that was noted in the application and then item G for reconstruction the physical condition and type of foundation present uh, I believe that's deemed to be in good good condition good shape do I hear a motion so let me state the motion that Richard P. Barker, number four, Boathouse Lane, tax map R03, lot 9H, is requ requesting to reconstruct an, an existing structure within 75 feet of the high water line of the Atlantic Ocean. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Would you, would you restate the motion, please? To approve the reconstruction of the applicant application of Richard P. Barker of 4 Boathouse Lane, tax map R03, lot 9H. <clears throat> to reconstruct an exist, existing structure within 75 feet of the high water line of the Atlantic Ocean. So moved. Seconded. Second. All in favor? It's four in favor, zero opposed. It's granted. Thank you. No. Communications. There are no communications. Any further business? The next meeting of the zoning board will be held on July 22nd, 2003. With no further business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you.